Shalom, wonderful people. I bring you all greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and King. We thank Him for His mercies. We thank Him for His protection. We thank Him. Uh, can we please share a word of prayer before we begin? Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to come before your people to deliver the message that, that you have just dropped into my spirit. Thank you, Lord. Man proposes that God opposes. Father, you have the final say. Yes. I give you the glory that this is the message you want to deliver to your people. Father, I pray that you speak through me. Come and take control in everything that I will do here so that at the end of it all, all the glory will be unto your name. Amen. My audience, I thank God for another special day. Today's message is to every, to every bereaved family or every family that is going through pain of losing a loved one. This message is to every loved one who has lost, uh, who has lost a loved one during this pandemic or during this hard time or this difficult moment. The Lord has a message for you. I know it is not easy. I know it is painful. But before I begin, I want to let you know that you are loved, that God loves you. He cares about you. He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. Not that he didn't hear your prayer. Not that when your family member, your sister, your auntie, your mommy, your uncle was going through that moment that you prayed and called upon him. Not that he didn't hear you. Yes, but he has a plan and a purpose for everything that we cannot understand. So please, I want to let you know that God has not forsaken you. I know many a time when we go through things, sometimes we just feel like we don't want to worship God anymore. We don't want to hear anything about God anymore. We have done with God. But he has the final say. If God should open your eyes for you to see maybe in a year or two, what to become the fate of that person, you have even wished they even die and gone. Okay? So please, um, I want us uh, to read something in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. That says, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. God will wipe all your tears. Yes. God will wipe all your tears and there will be no more crying. Okay. I know you are bitter in the spirit. I know you are hurting in the spirit. Yes. I know how it feels like when you lose a loved one, I know it's painful. I don't come and sit here and say, I don't know. I know it's painful. This message is to everyone who has lost a loved one during this COVID-19, during this pandemic. Please, I am here to tell you that God said he'll wipe away all your tears, that there will be no more cry. Okay, in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, it said, he will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Hallelujah. I know you are buried. I know you are crying. I know you are hurting. But I just want to assure you that God has not abandoned you in that situation. Even though you are crying, you are in pain and you don't see everything that is happening around you. But I want to assure you, if you open your eyes and you sit down and start counting from day one, you see that God has never abandoned you. Okay? Let us also look at something in um, Lamentation, uh, Lamentation chapter 3, the verse 32, that says, Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. So great is the unfailing love of God. 
so great is the unfailing love of God. I want to let you know that God will bring you compassion. God will show you compassion. God will, 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 will visit your home. God will restore back peace and harmony back into your home. God will fill your heart with joy again. God will comfort you again. I know over millions of people have died. Even in my country here where I am now in Chile, it's about 42,000 people. We have lost about 42,000 people who have died in this my country and just uh, 40, uh, uh, in this, two years, this period of two years. 42,000 people have died. And I know many countries that have died, 50,000, 60,000, I can't even count. But I want to let you know that everyone who has experienced this kind of pain, the Lord is comforting you. I pray that may the Lord comfort you. I pray that may God visit your home. I pray that may God restore back joy into your house for you to know that a day is coming that God will bring us all together again. And also let us look at something in uh, John chapter 11 the verse 25 to the verse 26 that says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. One thing I want you to know, if you're a believer and you believe in Jesus Christ and you believe in his death and his resurrection, you should know that a day is coming that we are going to resurrect. The dead will resurrect. Have this faith in God and do not uh, hurt yourself. Do not cry. Do not lock your door, your room, yourself up in your room so you don't serve the Lord. Do not go to church. But have this one faith in God. That he is our resurrection. And so Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Hallelujah. Though the physical body is no more, though the physical appearance of the person, you don't see it anymore. You don't see to converse with them, play with them, chat with them. But I want to let you know that they still live on. They still live on among us because they believe in God. They believe in Jesus Christ that even though they are dead, we have this faith that a day is coming. Jesus Christ is going to resurrect them and we will see them. Hallelujah. I just want to comfort you in the Lord. I'm bringing you this comfort in the Lord. That even though we have lost about 42,000 plus people in this Chile, and many people have lost many, I want to comfort you in the Lord that we have this one assurance, one thing that we are going to see them on the day of resurrection. We are going to see them and embrace them on the day of resurrection, those who will be alive by then. We are going to see them on the resurrection day. Hallelujah. And also look at uh, Psalm 147 verse 3 that says, He heals the brokenhearted. I pray God heals you and binds up their wounds. I pray today that God will heal your broken heart. I pray God heals every broken heart. Everyone, every heart that is bleeding. I know many love their mother, their father, their siblings. Some family have lost about three, five, six people in their family. I pray God heals your broken heart and binds your wounds. I pray he heals every broken heart during this COVID-19 that are left affected millions of people. I pray he heals your broken hearted and binds your wounds. Amen. He's going to heal your broken heart. It is not easy, but just give God the opportunity to heal the broken heart, to, 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 to fill the vacuum in your heart. Give God a chance to take control of your heart. Give God the opportunity to heal your wounds. Give God the chance to transform your life for him to make you see reason, give God the chance. Because he's the only one who can, who can cover that vacuum in your heart. He's the only one who can heals, uh, heals and binds your wounds. He's the only one. Hallelujah, somebody. Um, 
and then also look at something in John chapter 3 verse 16. So for God so loved the world. For God, God loves his son Jesus Christ. But because he loved us so much, he gave his only begotten son to come and die for us. To come and why did Jesus do that? Listen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish or may not perish but have everlasting life. John 3 16. Why did Jesus God did that? God sent his only begotten son to die for us so that we will have everlasting life even after death we still have everlasting life so i want to assure you that they have died they are no more but they have everlasting life through jesus christ our lord and savior and on the day of the resurrection we are going to see them i'm going to see my sister and i'll embrace her and i'll tell her how much i love her i'm going to see my elder brother that died when she, he was about five or four years, I'm going to see him and give him a kiss and tell him how much I love him. See my kid brother who also died at the age of two years. I'm going to embrace him, hug him and tell him how much I love him. We are going to see all of that through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we have the opportunity to have eternal life even after death. So I want to let you know, yes. We lost so many loved ones during this pandemic, but we believe that we are going to see them because they died in Christ. They died, in, they died believing in Him. So they have everlasting life, and we are going to see them on the day of resurrection. Okay? So this is a special message that, uh, you know, me, every message I bring, I take my Bible, want to bring a message, but where the Spirit of God will direct me, is where I will go. This is where the Spirit of God directs me to tell you that He will bring comfort to your home. That is going to heal your broken heart and it's going to bind your wounds. And we are going to see them because they died in Him. They died believing in Him. So they have eternal life. And on the day of resurrection, we are going to see all our loved ones that we have lost during this pandemic. And even uh, without this pandemic, we are going to see all of them. That is the assurance we have in God. So please give God the opportunity to bind your wounds and to heal your broken hearts. Give him the chance. One thing the enemy does is to accuse him before you. Say, you see what? You say you believe in God. If you have the power, why didn't he heal your family? Then to grab your attention and to destroy you. The more you get closer to God, the more you understand certain things. Many believe in God. Many pastors have been contacted, have been infected with this coronavirus. Many have died through it. Many got it, but they didn't. God has a purpose and a reason for everything. So if you don't get closer to God, the enemy will be polluting your mind, accusing Jesus Christ before you that you said he has power. Why didn't he heal that? Why didn't he change that situation? But get closer to God. You understand, you get to understand the purpose and the reason for that thing that has taken place in your family. When you read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the verse 42 to the verse 46, uh, our Bible makes us to understand that so it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sworn is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sworn in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Hallelujah. It is sworn in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sworn a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15, the verse 42 to the verse 45. This is the word of the Lord. So I want to tell you, even though they die, you know, in our eyes, we see that they have perished, they are no more. But our Bible is making us to understand something here, that they will be raised as a spiritual body. Even though they are sworn in weakness, it is raised 
in power. They will be raised in power and in spirit and in glory. So, listen. I know when I lost my family member, it was like everything has come to an end. It's like we can't eat. It's like we can't. But when we begin to understand God, when we begin to understand the way He does His things, we give Him the opportunity to heal our heart, for us not to blame ourselves. We give Him the opportunity to heal our wounds, to bind our wounds, to heal our broken heart, to amend our broken heart, and He does. He does. Yes, we are human. Sometimes we remember it and then we feel pain in our heart, in our chest. It is normal. But don't give the devil opportunity to tell you that God did not love you. If God loved you, if God really has power, why didn't he heal him or her from that pandemic? Why didn't he heal her from that coronavirus? Why didn't he prevent the accident from coming? If he sees everything, why didn't he, he prevent that? Why didn't he? The devil is an accuser. The devil will always try to accuse God before you. That if he is indeed God and he has power, your son loved him. Your son played guitar in the church. Your son plays the drum. He's a chorister. Your son is a pastor. Your mother spent all her years with God. Why did God allow COVID-19 to come and kill her or him? God has no power. That is what the devil will come and accuse. Like how he did to Job. The devil is an accuser. So I want to let you know that the devil will always come to accuse you, speak to you, but say to the devil, get out from me, you devil. Go away from you, you devil. Because the moment you begin to listen to that small voice, it draws you backwards and it will grab you and coming forth or coming out of it, it will become difficult. So I want to let you know, they die in shame, they die that we think they have perished, but because they believe in God, God said they will be raised in a spiritual body, okay? They, 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 you know, in a spiritual body, in different form, that they will stay with us all the days, that they will see no more death, okay? So please, bear in mind that God did not abandon you. God did not abandon you. God said, but God will redeem my life from the grave. He will surely take me to himself. Psalm 49 verse 15. But God will redeem my life from the grave. Yes, he will surely take me to himself. Redeeming, if the Bible says God will redeem my life from the dead, meaning you have been dead. They have been dead. They have been buried by God because they believe in God. They believe in the resurrection power. They believe in his eternal life. God will redeem their life from the grave. Meaning there will be res uh, resurrection, that they'll be resurrected. That means death has no power over them. They have been redeemed from the power of the grave of the death. Are you getting me? So this is what I want to let you know. That God did not abandon you. Yes, God never does. Many have COVID, they have gone. God has a purpose. Many are total believers. But yes, God has a reason why. So please, give God the opportunity to heal your heart. Give him the opportunity to bind your wounds. Okay? God bless you. Can we please share a word of prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. Thank you for bringing this word that you uh, heal their broken heart and bind their wounds. And even though we have lost our loved one, we are going to see them on the day of resurrection because they have eternal life in you. According to uh, John 3, 16, you came to die for us so that we have eternal life. Even after death, we still have eternal life. Thank you, God, for your word, for your assurance. We believe and trust in you. And I know that this message, you comfort everyone that is bereaved, who is breathing, who is crying, who, 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 who is going through a lot. I know they'll give you the opportunity to, for you to heal their wounds, heal their uh, uh, broken heart, to amend everything that they are going through, to mend every broken heart. 
We believe and trust in you. Through your son, Jesus Christ, we are prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. I'm a wonderful people. God bless you for watching. And don't forget to share the video, okay? Don't forget to share the video. Share it, share it, share it.